first of all, that OSHA is at the lowest level of inspectors it's ever had in its history. And I don't have a problem with the OSHA inspectors. I think they're trying to do a great job. It's the leadership that we have. There hasn't been an inspection of a health care facility uh, or a, a nursing home since February. Only last week did the, the secretary decide that he told his inspectors to get ready to do on-site inspections. And then in tandem with that, he said that we won't do any inspections of anything but health care facilities and nursing homes. So all the other places that are about to go back to work will be without inspectors. So it's not those inspectors. They're working hard. It's the leadership that I have a disagreement with. And his idea of guidance, rather than having an enforceable standard, we've tried that for years, and it's never worked. And the victims of that are always the workers. Richard, what do you think is the problem here? I mean, this is why OSHA was created back in 1970, to make sure that, that companies are providing healthy and safe places for their workers. Why, why is that not happening? Well, I think there's two reasons. One, this administration has put OSHA on a starvation diet. As I said, they have fewer inspectors now than they've ever had in the history. They have enough inspectors to inspect each workplace in the U.S. once every 165 years. Now, that ought to tell you where we're at. In addition to that, instead of going in and actually enforcing the law forcefully or having a standard that is enforceable, they do these things called guidance, where they suggest this and they suggest that. Good employers do it, bad employers don't, and workers pay the price every time an employer doesn't. So clearly, there's a, a balance at the moment, though, Richard. Uh, we, we saw some shocking uh, unemployment numbers uh, this morning. I mean, where do you stand in terms of wanting to see companies have the autonomy to decide if, if they can uh, open up uh, in some way or form versus uh, these, these tough restrictions uh, and guidelines that you're talking about? Wait a second, uh, Wilfred. Don't talk about tough restrictions and guidelines. Talk about worker safety. We want them to open up, but we want them to open up consistent with the health and the safety of those workers. Because if you don't, all that we will do is open up and then immediately in a, in a month or so have to close back down again because workers got infected. The notion is we need more testing, we need more personal protective equipment. Now, there are shortages of both now. We have 50 million people out of work. When those 50 million people try to come back to work, those shortages are going to magnify. So we have to make sure we have enough testing on hand, we have enough personal protective equipment on hand to protect the workers that actually come back into the workforce. That's what we need to do to prevent, prevent a second epidemic or a second surge so the economy has a false start. It starts up and then stops again. The CDC was supposed to release guidelines this week, I think a 17-page report on how everything from companies to churches and schools should responsibly reopen. The White House blocked that reportedly. I mean, how critical is it that the CDC gives these guidelines? Who's actually in charge of telling businesses how to do this in a safe way that's safe for their workers and for their customers and the, and the broader public? Look, the, the CDC is a reputable organization. Uh, they have scientists there that formulated those guidelines that would put people back to work in a safe way. The president looked at them, or the White House, someone in the White House looked at them and said, oh my, this is too stringent, and they nixed them. The scientists at CDC say they'll probably never see the light of day. That means that he wants to stampede a, a reopening of the economy, and he wants to have workers pay the price because he won't put those guidelines in effect. We don't also have uh, an enforceable safety standard for contagious diseases. We had that the, under the Obama administration. This administration scrapped it. We've asked them to put it back into place so that workers can be safe. If they don't feel safe, Sarah, they're not going to go back to work. We will not be able to reopen the economy the way it should open and keep it open once we do open it up.